Welcome to English 3E. This is class seven. We are working on the last little bit of unit one and I am Jillian Percy. As always, we kind of discuss how to reach me. I am here at the studio right now. The number is 1-800-465-7144. If you are trying to reach me when I'm not recording, 1-800-667-3703. However, as I've mentioned before, please do not leave any messages as there's a problem with my message box. Talk to me directly. If you need to fax in some work, 1-800-463-7852. If you need to reach me on Facebook or on YouTube, I am capital G, capital P, E-R-C-Y space, capital W, A-H-S-A. -A. Okay. So today's work, we have quite a bit of work today. Uh, in the textbook called The Road Ahead on page 34, there's a little activity called Before You Read. It's two marks, it is not very long. On page 34 to 35, there is a short article called Lost and Found. You need to read that. On page 36, do the activity called After You Read. That is 10 marks. There is also uh, extra assignment number nine, which is worth 17 marks, and extra assignment number 10, which is only worth five marks. Page 50 to 53 in making it work on the writing process. Please read that. Hopefully you already have. We talked about it yesterday a little bit. And the culminating activity, which is a rough and a good copy of an essay. Together, it is worth 45 marks. Obviously, you're not going to do all of this in one day, but I'm also aware that you've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this is uh, stuff you'd want to tackle a little bit at a time, okay? Don't worry if it takes you a little bit longer than that, too. But we're just kind of at the spot where we need to talk about it so you've got an idea how to get started on it, okay? <laughs> so a lot of those previous activities are really pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but I wanted to tackle uh, extra assignment number nine. This assignment is a two-parter. Part A asks you to define an autobiography. And if you're not sure, look it up in the dictionary. Part B asks you to write an autobiography about being a Canadian. This second part of the question is worth 15 marks. It is totally okay to write positive or negative things about being Canadian. It can be all completely negative if you want. It does not matter as long as it is a 15 mark worth essay. It needs to be only half a page long and basically about one or two paragraphs. I'm gonna say probably two paragraphs, really. Um, it does not need a rough draft, okay? And a good copy, just hand me in the good copy. Now, obviously you're gonna do a rough draft. It's worth 15 marks. You wanna take your time with this, like a little bit of time, um, but don't you don't need to hand it in. I'm not giving you marks for the rough copy like I sometimes do, okay? All right, so this is a, kind of a summary of the writing process. It is in your textbook called Making It Work. Um, I was a little bit surprised when I saw this because it was a little bit different than how I have seen the writing process described and even how I've taught it before. However, they are very similar. And as I looked at it more closely, I could see where the differences were. So I wanted to talk to you about it. Uh, normally, um, over here on the right side, this is the process I've usually heard described as the writing process. Pre-writing, write a first draft, revise, edit, and publishing. Sometimes you'll see presenting too, like say you were doing an oral presentation. Okay, however, here's how they've described it. Choose a format and topic, generate ideas, write a first draft, revise independently, revise with a partner where possible, and then write the final version. So as I looked at it, I realized these two items, choose a format and topic and generate ideas, they're kind of both a part of pre-writing. They're just kind of separating them out so you can see the extra steps. Writing the first draft is the same. Uh, on this side, they put revise and edit. Here, when they're talking about revising independently, they're including editing as part of that process. And then you, they kind of want you to go all over it again, but with a partner. So it is still these two steps, but the big thing is that they've got a partner going on. And then the final version, um, at, which is what they're calling publishing. So it's mostly similar. There are just a few differences in case you've, you've heard the 
the one here with the pre-writing. That's what I've heard before. Okay. So I'm going to break down the steps because they are really, really thorough. And I think it's a, a helpful thing, but sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. Okay. So choose a topic. It might be your own or it might be assigned by the, te the teacher. And then choose the type of writing you will do. They give you some examples, like an opinion paper, response paper, descriptive paragraph, narrative, explanation, report, formal essay, or familiar essay. If you were just writing for yourself, maybe you would include poetry or songs in there, right? What type of writing you do, it's going to affect how you approach things and how you write, basically. Decide who your audience is or who they should be. Understanding who your audience is can help you decide how formal to be or what type of language or tone to use. And I'll talk about that more a little bit later when we get specific. I'm just kind of summarizing right now. Generate ideas. Now, this is all still part of pre-writing. Begin by brainstorming all the ideas you can think of for your piece. Number two, share your ideas with someone else to see if they can add ideas. And this could be anyone. It could be a teacher, could be a fellow student, could be a partner. Just sometimes people will be like, oh, well, you know, if you're writing about uh, that big trip where you went fishing, did you remember to include this information? So sometimes it just helps to have um, someone else uh, give an opinion about what you're thinking about. Begin to put your ideas in order so that you can save the strongest point or the most interesting idea for the end. Um, this is sometimes called outlining as well, uh, which was a huge thing for a while. Then people kind of dropped it. But again, people are trying to realize again that, you know, actually outlining can be really, really helpful for giving you a starting point for your writing. So they're beginning to include it again in the steps for writing. Write a first draft. This is basically the same anywhere. Use the order or the outline you created to help you write your piece. Don't worry about spelling, grammar, punctuation, or typing errors. Just keep writing until you feel like you finished. I also want to point out, if as you're writing, the outline seems like it hasn't got enough or you want to change it, that's totally fine. Don't just feel like, well, I created this outline and now I must follow it no matter what. No, absolutely not. You know, it's your writing. If you don't like the outline after you made it, don't worry about it. Throw it in the garbage and start fresh. It is not a problem. This is your draft. You get to decide. You are the boss. The outline is not the boss, okay? Now, here's where it begins to get different. I like that they are so detailed, but I was worried that it might be a bit overwhelming. So anyways, uh, first of all, they say revise for content. In other words, what you're saying. Does the writing say what I wanted it to say? Have I repeated ideas? Are the ideas in a logical, easy to follow order? Make your introduction and your conclusion as strong as you can. Ensure any facts or quotes are correct. And if you used outside sources, make sure they are cited properly in your writing. Now, that one isn't one we're probably going to worry about in this unit, but it might come up later on. And we'll, again, we will talk about it later on. Uh, revising on your own. Also revise for vocabulary. Circle words that have been repeated too often. Use a thesaurus to replace them with synonyms. Remember that there are online thesauruses as well. You're welcome to use that. It doesn't have to be a physical thesaurus. Find words that may be too simple or boring and replace them with more interesting words. But try to make sure the writing still sounds like you in its tone. <laughs> This one is kind of important. Sometimes in our efforts to make our, our writing sound more um, interesting, we use so many words that just are outside of what we would normally talk that it doesn't sound like us anymore. Sometimes it can be what you're wanting if you're like, you know, maybe you're writing a resume and stuff and you want to sound very upscale or something, but sometimes it just comes off really strange. So keep in mind as you read it back, does it still sound like you talking? Revise on your own. Uh, Revise for structure. Okay, so structure is kind of how you organize things. Have you followed the format conventions correctly? Do your paragraphs have all the elements they need, like a topic sentence, supporting details, a conclusion, or a transition sentence? Is each topic a separate paragraph? Have you used a variety of sentence structures? Simple complex and compound, and I believe we talked about that yesterday or the day before. If you're not remembering that, by all means, 
take a look back at the previous um, commentary. You can also find all sorts of uh, videos on YouTube about that kind of stuff, okay? Fourth, revise for spelling and grammar. This is what we would normally call editing, right? It's the nitpicky or the fussy stuff. If you're using a computer, use the spell check or the grammar check to help you, but remember that it won't catch everything. You will still have to do a physical check yourself. Remember we talked yesterday about how it may not catch certain kinds of spelling errors. It may not catch certain kinds of punctuation errors. So check for punctuation and capitalization. And again, we discussed a lot of that yesterday because I knew this was coming up. And check for common usage mistakes like there, 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 and two, two, two. So I wasn't sure if you guys would know what this one means. So I just kind of covered it. <clears throat> it's like one of the most common mistakes students make in their writing. So this is this cute little meme I found. And it says there with a little person, which is when it belongs to somebody there with an arrow showing that it's location and there with the a so tiny it looks like it's the apostrophe so um so it's a contraction right so there with e-i-r means it belongs to somebody it is their car their e-r-e -E is location and i went over there to look for my cat and then there with a little apostrophe is a contraction of the phrase they plus are, they are. So they're coming to my home or house. These are what we call homophones, right? They sound exactly the same, but they're spelled different and they mean something different. So if you put the wrong one for what, what you mean in your sentence, that's an error. So you need to be cautious of this kind of stuff. The other one that's really common, kind of less so, I think, as you get older, but two, two, and two. Two, T-W-O is the number two, like I want two cookies. Two with one O is the location. I'm going to the store or give that to me. Uh, two with double O's is like also, like I want to go to or me too, okay? So there are other usage errors, but these are some of the most common ones. So something to keep in mind is checking for those too, okay? When you're writing fast and getting your ideas down, it's really easy to make those kind of mistakes. And then as you read back over it again, go, oh, wait, that's that's not quite right. Revise with a partner. I've never seen this one before. I like it. Um, you may feel like, oh, God, I don't have an easy partner. Well, maybe there's another student who's working on this with you. Uh, maybe there's another adult who lives at the house that is willing to, to read it and discuss it with you. Maybe you're working out of a learning center and the teacher's willing to work with you. So I know not everybody has access to a partner who's willing to read their work. If you do have somebody who's willing to, this is a great step to do, okay? Have the partner read it silently and give a quick opinion. Then read it out loud to see if it sounds right and flows well. Number two, Ask your partner to comment on these areas. Format, does it follow the format correctly? So if you were supposed to be writing a, a personal narrative, that's different than a personal letter. You have to follow the right format. Tone, what is the tone? Does it match what you were aiming for? So tone is just like kind of like the emotion or the feeling your, your essay evokes, right? It's totally fine to be silly and goofy if you're doing like a Facebook message or if you're writing a funny note in a card, it might not be the right thing for some of these assignments though, right? So think about your tone. Vocabulary. Is it appropriate? Is it too formal? Is it too informal? For example, uh, certain slang and idioms. Sentence structure. We've talked about this a little bit before, right? Different kind of sentences. Um, simple, compound and complex. But you can also just listen to how it sounds, right? Does it sound choppy, like every sentence is kind of short? Or is it all too long? Oh, that might be a hint you've got a lot of run-on sentences. Is your meaning clear? And does it flow well? Is your meaning clear? If you are writing longer sentences, that is one, one time where it can be really easy to lose track of your meaning. If you find it unclear, try shortening things and see if that helps, okay? I do find with um, any kind of an essay, a combination of shorter sentences and longer sentences just sounds better on the ear, okay? 
All right. And write the final version. Okay, that's the last step. Um, this would also include writing or typing your good copy. And it would also include publishing, which in our case would be handing it into the teacher. Now, um, if you were, you know, if you're trying to actually get published, then obviously just writing the final version wouldn't be enough for that. You would have to think about where are you trying to publish? Are you trying to, are you planning to put it up on a Facebook page? Do you have a web blog? Is there a magazine or a newspaper you're hoping is going to print it? Uh, have you got a novel that you're, you're sending out? Is there a poetry or entering a contest? So publishing can actually be a whole separate step. Um, but in this case, they're kind of ignoring that. And it, it's okay. It sort of works for what we're doing. But I just want to be mindful that some of you may actually enjoy writing and want to be doing writing. And in that case, publishing could be a whole separate step for you. Okay. So the biggest difference between this model of the writing process and the more traditional model are these, okay? Um, this model divides the pre-writing stage into two steps. First, choosing a topic, format, and audience. And then the second step of brainstorming also includes ordering your ideas or creating a small outline. There is a lot greater emphasis placed on the revision step very specific instructions on looking for di several different types of issue as each revision step. It, it also includes having a partner look at your work and giving you feedback. And this is valid, okay? In the real world, most writers don't just send something in and it gets printed as is. Even it's been as simple as writing a letter to a newspaper, like you wanted to complain about you know, a new law or something that's going on in your town, even still, the editor is going to look over it, make sure it sounds okay. They might shorten it. They might provide feedback. So all they're trying to do is make sure that you're aware. Uh, writers don't write in isolation, not in the real world. In the real world, they have readers who read stuff. They have partners who might talk about stuff. They have editors who are looking things over. They even have copy editors who are looking for mistakes. So all they're doing is trying to make sure that it's you understand that it's valid to have someone else read your work and give you some commentary. And I just want to encourage you, please, by all means, that's not cheating. It's totally fine. You're still the person that's going to have to change things. They're just giving you ideas. <clears throat> okay. This is the final activity for unit one. Okay. We have other units, but this is for unit one. Your culminating activity for this opening unit of your course will be to develop a short essay, giving you the opportunity to answer the questions outlined in the description section back on page eight. You were encouraged to ask and answer questions about yourself and your own goals in life. Who are you? Who are the people who have shaped you? How do you help shape the world around you? Assuming that you and your teacher have never met, which is true, and therefore doesn't know anything about you, except that you're presently taking this course, you're gonna describe yourself and where you have been. Basically, you will be sharing information about your life's journey so far. So for example, you might like to begin with something like, I was born in Muskrat Dam in 1995, and I am the oldest of five children. <laughs> it is really your decision as to what you have to say afterwards. Topics to include in your essay are early family life, friends in elementary or high school, special events remembered, favorite pastimes growing up, a trip taken with family and or friends, community involvement, volunteer or paid, people looked up to, accomplishments over the years, on plans, if any, for the near future. All right, the essay requirements. You're gonna be using the steps of the writing process as outlined on pages 50 to 53 of your textbook, making it work to produce your essay. As mentioned at the top of page 50, writing is a process that takes time and thought. You have most likely used the writing process for a similar assignment in the past, and this one will allow you to further develop your writing skills. Please note, only provide information in your essay that you feel comfortable in sharing don't feel that you have to share every fine detail of your life, but certainly share enough about yourself to meet the length requirement. 
and then he kind of waxes philosophical, it is useful to know that having a good understanding of where we have been in life so far and experiencing successes and failures, happiness and sadness along the way can only help prepare us for the road ahead. All right, length. The first draft, which is the rough copy, should be at least two pages. This must be handwritten. This has to be your own work too. Please guys, don't borrow somebody else's. Um, final copy is a computer printout. You need to use size 12 font. If it's too small, it's gonna be hard for me to read. If it's too large, it's gonna look like you've done enough work, but you won't have it. I will notice that, okay? Um, you can also hand in your final copy neatly handwritten if you've got beautiful handwriting, by all means. However, if there is any chance that your handwriting is not easy to read, then please hand it in with a computer um, typing. If you're not sure, ask a friend to look and make sure they understand the words. If they say something like it's mostly okay, then please understand that that means I probably won't understand every word and that's going to affect your marks. So make sure you are a beautiful printer or handwriter if you're going to hand me in handwritten, okay? And I'm not putting anyone down that. I'm a terrible handwriter. I wouldn't hand anything in handwritten because I guarantee you somebody would be like, I can't read your chicken scratch. So I don't know why um, I am very grateful for computers because my handwriting is just not as beautiful as I would like it to be at all. Evaluation. Okay, so five marks are going to go to a title page. Your title and page has to include a graphic, a picture or a sketch. It could just be of yourself or your community or whatever. Your name, the course. Please make sure to put the course. I have so many assignments coming in. And the date that you handed it in on, okay? 20 marks is going to go for the rough draft. Okay, remember it's two pages, so 20 marks. And 25 marks goes for your final copy. So I know I've talked about this before, and I will probably talk about it again. There should be significant changes between your rough copy and the final copy that you hand in to me, right? All those steps for revision, I need to see that you've taken them. If I read your final copy and it sounds almost exactly the same as your rough copy, then you're not going to get very good marks because you haven't done the work that you're supposed to be doing for that, okay? Okay, so I wanted to walk you through how you would follow the writing step process to do the assignment. So step one in the writing process is choose a format and topic. In this case, um, the assignment's already told you what format. The format has to be a personal essay. It's also chosen your audience, your teacher. So I just wanted to mention, I know that I read all the assignments, but sometimes in the assignment, the audience um, might sound like the peer, the parent, a customer, in addition to the teacher. But in this assignment, I'm your main audience, right? I am who you're writing it for. How does this affect your tone that you're writing to your teacher? And how does this affect how formal or informally you write? Hint, the first few times my teenage son kept mentioning that he was feeling salty, I had no idea what he was saying. So popular slang that might be totally acceptable to say to a friend might go right over my head and simply leave me confused and baffled. So try to go through and think, hey, if I was reading this to my gookum, because I'm probably your gookum's age, um, would she understand or would there be words in here she didn't understand that I was talking about, okay? So be cautious with slang. I am not like uh, in any way a totally hip person. I am not even remotely up to date on current slang. Um, also, how does this affect how personal or how many details you tell me? Another hint, if you wouldn't say it, not see it, say it to a real live teacher in person, you probably shouldn't say it to me, even if you've never met me, okay? Step one, part two. This is where you're generating ideas, okay? Now, the assignment does help you do this in part. It generates a possible list of topics, but ultimately, you have to choose which ones you want to write about. Now, most of these should be covered, but there may be some things that you skip over, okay? Um, the assignment's list of suggestions is early family life, friends in school, special events, favorite pastimes, a special trip with community or friends, community involvement, volunteer or pay, people looked up to, like people that mentored you or that you um, 
you know, just had a lot of respect for, maybe followed or tried to imitate. Um, accomplishments over the years, not just year, years, I apologize. I do reread these, but there's so much. Plans, if any, for the future, right? Here is my list of ideas about my own life, okay? Growing up in my neighborhood, the woods, the river, crawfish hunting, skating. Friends in my neighborhood, I could talk about my friends Lori and Layla. Special events like my family reunions. Special trip, going to California with my cousin Natalie. Volunteer work helping with the handicapped boy Peter. People looked up to, my grandma and my aunt. Accomplishments. I weren't really sure what to put for accomplishments, like getting married. Does that count? Uh, moving to Cat Lake. Um, finishing high school. Uh, getting some sort of special training, like, uh, you know, um, heavy machine training or getting your driver's license or, um, you know, scoring MVP in the last basketball tournament. Anything like that would be totally fine, right? That's what they're kind of looking for there. Okay, so the writing process also suggested ordering your ideas or putting them in order. Your essay could be ordered several different ways. You could order it by chronology or time, so the same order as things happened. You could order it in importance, from smaller things to greater things or from greater importance to lesser. You could order it by emotion. Events that evoked similar emotions might be grouped together. Or by topic, talking about friends all in one paragraph, family all in another, or school all in another. Any one of these is totally valid, and you get to choose. How you choose to order your thoughts and paragraphs is entirely up to you. It is also okay to try one way and find that it isn't quite working, and then try a different way, okay? I think that in my essay, I'm going to try organizing my essay chronologically or in the same sequence that it happened in my life. But you know what? I'm not sure that way it will work. So I'm going to keep my mind open that I might want to change it as I go along. And that's fine. Okay. So remembering that this was two pages, I kind of thought I need to think about how I'm going to order things. And I, I ended up adding quite a few details because that's a lot to write. So um, at the beginning, I was thinking about my grandparents, my parents, how they met, my brothers, where we lived. Number two, growing up in that neighborhood together, friends, activities we all did together, favorite hobbies growing up, uh, people who I looked up to growing up, um, that trip to California that we did, why it was important to me, going to high school, what was great about it, changing my style, um, jobs that I worked in high school, volunteer work I did in high school, and why it was important and how it influenced later choices. <laughs> Going to university, trying to figure out what to do for a job, ending up in Cat Lake, and again, Cat should be a capital, my apologies, getting married and having a family, moving to Sioux Lookout. Now, I may not include every idea that I've got written here, but it's better to start with too many ideas than not have enough ideas, okay? Remember that you're going to have to write two pages about your life, and that is a lot of writing. If you haven't yet, take 15 to 20 minutes right now to look over your rough ideas and think about how you want to order them, just like I did. This didn't take me very long, okay? Remember, you can always add in some ideas if it seems like you don't have enough to write about. Okay. And the one thing I want to talk about here is sometimes our desire for things to be perfect or best can get in the way of us starting. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be best. Um, diving in and getting some work done is better than being so anxious or worried about doing it right that nothing gets done at all, okay? Because you can always fix it if you do something, but if all you have is a blank page, it's really hard to fix that, okay? <clears throat> okay, so here is my first rough draft, okay? My mom and dad met in university. I don't know how, but I do know they got married shortly after university ended. My mom is the eldest of six siblings, and my dad was an only child. That means they were both pretty bossy and used to getting their own way. My older brother is named Corey, and he is seven years older than me. He always just seemed like an extra adult around the house, and it seemed like he kept a pretty close eye on me. My younger brother is named John. 
He was like my best friend growing up. It seemed like we did everything together. He was the family comedian, the kid that could make everyone laugh. He is still that way, which is probably my favorite thing about him. Then there was me, the middle child. Not as serious as my big brother, not as silly as my younger brother, and the only girl. I hated that part growing up. I was so jealous of my friends that had sisters. It seemed like they had so much fun together. Okay, so that's my, my rough draft, and here's kind of my commentary on my rough draft, okay? This is just my first paragraph. I don't want to try to revise it right now, as that might make me feel too worried about getting it right, which might affect my ability to keep working on the essay. It seems a little long to me, but I know I can always make it shorter later on if I want to. I really encourage you, if you're doing this at home, take a moment, pause, try and write your first paragraph based on your, your little order and your outline, okay? Again, this didn't take me long, maybe 15, 20 minutes. If you just dive in and do a little bit at a time, it's going to be so much easier. So take a moment right now, pause it, and try and uh, write that paragraph, okay? <laughs> Okay, here's my second paragraph, which is kind of more about growing up. I grew up in Windsor, over on the east side, where the city was still growing. There were still a lot of empty fields in the area. Across the street was a small creek where we used to go crawfish hunting. A couple blocks away was a small wooded area by the river where we used to go have picnics. Sometimes my dad would take us canoeing down that river. It was a great place to grow up. We were outside all the time, up until the streetlights came on. Once they lit up, it was officially nighttime, and we all ran back to our own houses. There were a lot of us who lived in that area, and it seemed like there was always someone outside to play with. We had so much fun playing baseball and street, street hockey, I think I spelled that wrong there, and hide and seek. In the winter, the field would get so wet and then ice over, and we would skate around the little puddles of ice. Once the heavy snows came, we would walk over to the garbage dump. That probably sounds terrible, but they had turned it into a huge hill and put a bunch of dirt on top and laid grass over it and turned it into the best place to go sliding in town. In the winter time, my brother and I and our friends would walk over there with our sleds and go up and down that hill as many times as we could before our legs were too tired to climb that hill one more time. Again, I am aware that there are some spelling issues and grammatical issues here because Google is telling me, <clears throat> but I'm not going to worry about that right now. For you, you're going to be doing your first draft handwritten anyways, so you're not going to have those little lines show up, okay? <clears throat> I wanted to address this more officially than just in the assignment. I, I need you to be cautious. I want you to protect yourself. Please remember that other people besides me may see your work, especially if it's getting fact in, faxed into us. You do not want to include anything that you would find embarrassing or upsetting for others to know about in your essay. Some things are too personal to discuss, okay? So for example, I've had some, some deaths in my family. I'm not going to talk about that. That would be that would be too personal. It would make me feel sad. It's not really anyone else's business. So think about that, first of all. <clears throat> also think about, you would not want to go into detail on any illegal activities, especially if the authorities are unaware of those activities. I am a mandated reporter. And what that means is, by law, I must report any physical or sexual abuse that I become aware of. This is by law, okay? Certain people are mandated reporters, teachers, doctors, nurses. We are under that category. So don't tell me those things because I will have to pass them on. Also, if I become aware that you have plans to harm yourself or to harm others, I will also need to report it, okay? So please, this is a simple essay for, not, for marks. Don't include anything in it that you might later come to regret or that could possibly harm or embarrass you or others, okay? Wanted to talk about that. All right, we are running 
a little bit. I'm going to go on to this, but then I'm going to go back and do a little bit more writing, okay? How to tackle all this work, okay? I've put a lot on here. It's because it's Thursday and it's our last day doing um, these classes. So I know you've got the weekend, okay? So I know it's got a lot of work, okay? But some of the assignments are really short. It's okay to take, you know, do a couple of assignments one day, a couple of assignments the other day. It's okay even to still be doing this next week. That's fine, okay? But I also know sometimes you get uh, on the weekend, you might have a bigger stretch of time if you're working or something, and maybe you'll be able to make use of that time. So that's why I'm giving you kind of all these assignments now so that you've got um, the work to do in case you want to, okay? I would do the last few reading assignments first, right? Up at the top, hang on a second. Uh, let's see. Okay, up at the top, the activity called before you read, reading that little article, it's two pages, it's nothing. And then the activity called after you read, that's maybe a little bit harder. I would tackle these before I start doing the other assignments, okay? Those are the first ones. Then the extra assignment, okay? Um, extra assignment 19 is where you're having to write an autobiography. This is really short, okay? So get all those done before you tackle this big assignment, okay? You wanna hand those in to me. This is the last thing. These should be done first. And you can see too, like two plus 10 is 12, 12 and five is 17, 17 and 17, uh, 34. All of those assignments together are still somewhat less, but getting kind of close to that. So it's worth doing them, okay? And I'm worried that if you go on and just start tackling the rough copy, that you might not get those assignments done. You might forget or they might just seem unimportant, okay? But if you lost 34 marks, it's a big chunk of marks to lose, okay? Head back down. Okay. After you've done that, I would do the work about brainstorming and ordering your ideas. That might take 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast you work. Maybe it takes half an hour, especially if you follow the advice to ask somebody else for help. Then begin working on the rough draft of your essay. Now, some people might do this and want to dive right into this. Some people might want to take a little bit of time kind of um, letting your ideas percolate, okay? Thinking about stuff a little bit and then tackling your rough draft. It just sort of depends on how you work, right? Um, the rough draft is two pages. You want to write with as much detail as you can. To do that, spending time doing this, especially the ordering your ideas, is really, really, really valuable, okay? It also means you don't have to do as much work in the in the good copy. If you end up having to reorder everything in the good copy because you, you, you're not happy with your order, it can be a lot of work, okay? Um, also, writing too long is fine. It's usually easier to take things out than to add things in later. After you are happy with the length of the rough draft, then you can start the revision process. Remember, you're going to need to hand me in the rough copy. <clears throat> so don't do any revisions. Write on the original that you're going to hand in photocopy it or handwrite it again and do your revisions on the on the the photocopy or you can type it into google docs and do your revision steps there remember i need to have a separate rough copy and a separate good copy you don't want to put all your revisions on your rough copy because i won't be able to read it really okay so remember those are two separate and you get like 20 marks just for your rough copy so it's worthwhile to do a good job and hand me in a nice clean copy, okay? All right. Okay. After you've got at least two pages of your rough copy and you've made a duplicate copy of it, either by handwriting, copying, or typing it into the computer, then you are ready for the next step. And it's not a question, it's a statement. Here we go. Revision. The revision process they describe in the book is extremely detailed. Please make sure you read it. I do a very condensed version, okay? It can be very helpful or it might seem overwhelming. So we are gonna walk through how to do the revision process in more detail on, in, on Monday because we are kind of running out of time. But in case you wanna get started, here is a quick review of the things to look for. So first, they want you to revise for vocabulary. 
Then they want you to revise for structure and then revise for spelling and revise for grammar. So each time you're looking at different things. I would say I'm hoping that for structure, they mean like your organization and adding ideas because this one is the one I think is like the most important part. And I would actually say this one is the one that I think is more important. And I would do that first. That is just me though. You are welcome to do this. Now, revising for vocabulary. This is one of those things, and I'm gonna see if I can, well, will let me add a slide or not. It will. Okay, um, and I'm gonna try and add the, the text. The one time it kicked me out, I am hoping it will not because I really want to be able to type. Um, but I know one time it just kicked me right out and didn't let me do any typing. So I was very frustrated. Um, so I'm going to try here. Okay. Because I want to talk about vocabulary. Sometimes kids kind of aren't, students, sorry, not kids, um, aren't really sure what they need to do for vocabulary. So let me see if it'll let me do it. Yep. Okay, good. Okay. So vocabulary. Okay. And we did talk about this in terms of having a thesaurus. So for example, let's say in the, the sentence that you said the word went. Well, went's kind of a, a bit of a boring word. And a lot of times kids will overuse it and it can become, sorry, students, um, it become very obvious and it kind of can become annoying. Anytime you're reading the same word over and over and over again in a story or an essay, it can, it can really stand out. It doesn't stand out when we talk so much because we're in the moment. But when you're reading and rereading, which is what I'm going to be doing, it really does become noticeable. So I want to talk about some other words than the word went. So for example, walked, um, ran, trudged, right? raced, stumbled, stepped. Um, let me think here. What are some other words that mean like you're moving forward? Walked, um, strolled, oops, not strolled, strolled, um, sauntered, strutted. Like a lot of these words, they're more vivid. They're going to create a better picture in somebody's mind right? So um, it's okay to say went once, but if you find yourself saying went over and over again, that could be a, a problem, okay? So another one that might come up is the word, hang on, the word good. It was good. Okay. I'm going to, sorry, I meant to underline it and then take the underlining off is what I was hoping for. Okay. So good. Other words for good, it might be, it was awesome. Uh, excellent. It was great. Uh, amazing. Fantastic. Very fantastic. Wonderful. Um, let me think here. Cool. Some of these I know, like when we're talking, it can sometimes sound artificial to use words like fantastic, right? Um, but in your writing, it can sound perfectly fine. So don't be afraid to say, oh, that sounds too fancy. That's not how I talk. Well, yeah, you know, to a degree for sure, right? But if you're saying, well, that was good and this was good and it was good that and you're finding again, you're using the same word over and over and over again, then take a moment, look at a thesaurus, brainstorm some other ways to say the same thing. I guarantee you it is going to make your writing really pop and look more interesting. Okay. And there's one more that's a really common one for students to kind of misuse. And that is the word said. This is one of those words that gets overused like crazy. Okay. So said, like he said this, then I said this. Okay. So there are all sorts of ways that people can talk. 
And there are all sorts of verbs that are around to help us help us in, imply those ways. And when we do that, it's going to put a, a like a richer picture in your your reader's mind. So I might have muttered something or screamed it, shouted it, or shrieked it. Ooh. Um, I might have, uh, let me think, explained it, um, whispered, whispered it. Maybe I had to repeat, repeat it, oops, repeated it, okay? Those are all words that tell me a lot more than just said. Now, said is perfectly fine to use several times in your writing. It just, you don't want to overuse it. So that's, that is one element of vocabulary. And it's a really important element. When we talk, we often use the same words over and over. It kind of becomes our go-to, our go-to words, right? Like my son saying salty over and over again for, for angry. And that's totally fine for talking. But in our writing, because um, when you're talking to somebody, people have nonverbal cues to go off of your face, your tone, your gestures, all those kind of things help to convey your meaning. In writing, all we have are the words on your page, right? So because of that, you need to use sometimes richer or more detailed or fancier words than you might than when you're just talking, right? Like if I'm talking to some friends and I say, well, she said that she liked him, but I don't know. Well, the way I say said and maybe the look on my face explains, you know, like I'm, I'm not really sure that she was being truthful there. Well, I need to think of a way to convey that in my, in my writing. All right. So this is a really important point to be mindful of as you're doing your revisions is that we we're talking about vocabulary. That's the kind of thing they're talking about. Go back through, look for words that have been used multiple times, like went, like said, and try and find more inventive ways to say it. And like I said, I, I can't really show you right now because if I do that, it'll shut my machine down. But if you go and say like online thesaurus, It'll tell you the word that, you know, put in the word that you want said. It'll give you a whole list of alternatives, okay? The only way I caution you is if you come across one you've never heard of and you're not 100% sure you know what it means, don't use it if you don't know what it means because sometimes the words have a slight difference. So like going back to the word said, for example, shouted, shrieked, and screamed, they're all really similar but I don't think of them as exactly the same. Like shouted, I picture someone talking very loudly. Screamed, that's more like someone's frantic, like, like they're trying to yell all the way across a, a yard or someone's hurting them. And to me, shrieked is even, even higher. Like that's someone completely out of control. They're yelling as loudly as they can. So even though these are all synonyms, for the word said, they don't all mean exactly the same way. So let's say you looked at shrieked and were like, I've never heard that word before. I, I don't really know. Don't use it. If you've never heard the word before used or you've never read it before, that might not be the right word to choose because it might mean something slightly different than what you were talking about. Um, same kind of thing, say whispered versus muttered. They're both talking about talking in a low tone of voice. Whisper, though, would imply that I'm maybe talking quietly to somebody. Muttered, mutter usually means like, I don't want the person to hurt. Like, um, as my boss walked away, I muttered, oh, I hate you, right? They have different meanings, okay? So keep in mind that although they're synonyms, it doesn't mean they all mean exactly the same thing. And you want to be mindful of that when you do it. All right, so if you get finished your rough copy over the weekend, please start working on the revision process. If you don't get a chance to handle the good copy, I will be talking a little bit more about the revision process just because they are very, very detailed and I wanna make sure you do all those steps. Thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate your attendance 
any questions or concerns you have, please email me or call me. I will be in my office for the next hour. Thank you so much. Remember, there's no class tomorrow, and I will uh, be here again on Monday. Goodbye, everybody.